Alright guys, welcome to RC Mojo. This week it's going to be a quick one. It's already Sunday afternoon as I'm making this, so time is a bit tight. Right, well, we've got a new motor for the Scania. The plan was to build the truck with one from the beginning, but they've been out of stock for months. But they came back in stock a few days ago, so we have a Hobbywing Quick Run Fusion SE. A brushless crawler motor and ESC combo that's particularly suited for low speed torque. Now you may be thinking, why would you use a brushless system on a Tamiya lorry? A brushed ESC and motor work just fine, and you'd be right. The trick is, a smooth running brushed ESC, like the WP1080, will set you back 50 quid, plus an 80 turn motor will be another 15 quid or so. Uh, well, the Fusion SE will be even smoother and torquier, and it's only an extra 15 or 20 quid. A bit of a bargain. Also, because the ESC is built into the motor, it makes a load of chassis space available for other bits and bobs. Now, the only thing to watch out for is, while it's supposed to be a 540 motor, it's actually quite a bit longer than your typical silver can, so you might need to do some rearranging of your shift and steering servos to make it fit. But we covered a micro servo mod for the gearbox in the gearbox stage of the build, so check that out for more info. Also with the motor, we get a zip tie, a short servo extension to make the programming with a programmer a little bit easier, and the manual. The manual, or instruction sheet I suppose would be more accurate, is a typical hobby wing. There's only really a couple of bits you need to follow, the throttle calibration and the setup table. The rest just covers typical RC stuff, like plugging into your radio and battery. If you've built an RC before, there's really nothing new. Right, first job then is to rip out the current install. We need to disconnect the servo leads from the receiver, unplug the motor, and pry off the ESC, which is stuck on with fast track servo tape, so it's going to come off quite cleanly. The main reason that I always recommend it. Most foam tapes fall to bits and leave glue behind, which is a pain to get rid of. I'm sure it's sold under other names too. It's probably just some sort of Chinese stuff, but it does work rather well. Next the battery extension needs to come out, and annoyingly the battery connector is just slightly too big to go through the gap, so we need to remove the tanks from the side too. Next we undo the six screws that attach the plate to the chassis and remove it. Remove the four gearbox mount screws and wiggle it free. Then we remove the five gear case screws and separate the halves. Remove the two motor screws, and lastly loosen the pinion grub screw and remove the pinion. Right. The new motor has several pairs of mounting holes, so we can choose the angle it sits on the gearbox. I'm hoping we can mount it so the wires come up just above the lower deck of the electronics tray. To mount, we just reuse the two screws and the washer from the kit, along with the fibre spacer. Add the pinion, and then we set the gear mesh. And it's worth noting that with this motor, we will have quite a bit more torque and punch than the brush setup. So we need to take extra care to get the mesh just right, and set the pinion on the shaft so the teeth line up nicely. It's well worth getting it just so now, rather than having to replace gears when something goes pop. Now because we've got the micro shift servo attached to the gearbox, rather than the chassis, we can power up the system with the gearbox open and see how it runs. We just need to plug the shift servo into the receiver, turn on the transmitter, which is already set up with zero trim and even endpoints on the throttle, and then we plug in the battery, a 2S LiPo, and hit the power button. And well, it works right out of the box. The motor is almost completely silent. The majority of the noise is coming from the gearbox. Also, if I set the throttle so the motor spins as slowly as possible, it's producing so much torque I can't stall the motor, which is quite impressive. A high turn brush motor that will run fairly well at that RPM would be quite easy to stall, and under load with the weight of the truck, you'd need even more throttle just to get going. Next, we will set up the throttle neutral and endpoints on the ESC. Probably not strictly necessary, but it will get the best from the system. All we do is turn the ESC off, then we hold the power button down until it flashes red and let go. Then with the throttle neutral, we click the button. We go full throttle and click the button again. 
And lastly, full reverse and click the button again. It'll store the points, beep, and then we can test it out. When you're at partial forward or reverse, the light will flash and at full forward or reverse, it goes solid green. If it does that, you're all set. So with all that done, now we can rebuild. But for now, I'm just going to pop in a couple of screws, just enough to hold the case together. Pop it into the chassis and install a couple of the mounting screws and test fit the electronics tray. The idea is to have the wiring run along the top of the lower deck and under the top. But no, it's not even close. Now we could set it up so the wires come out right at the top, but I think they won't look quite so neat. Instead, I took it to bits again and rotated the motor so the wires come out the bottom. Now we should be able to run the battery wires along the side of the gearbox and the signal wires can come up along the top. It's a bit of a fiddle, but it does seem to fit okay. To make it a little bit easier, I did remove the top deck. There's a little bit less to get tangled up with. It's a bit tight in there, but it does all fit. Under the chassis, we can hook up a battery. There's just enough battery lead, it's not too difficult to connect up, but it's still not ideal. It would be easy for the wires to get themselves somewhere that they're going to rub the drivetrain, which isn't so good. I'll see if I can come up with some protection, maybe a bit of plastic mounted to the end of the gearbox, just to keep the wires safe. Either way, for now, it'll be okay for a quick test. We can flip it back over and power it up. It's more or less silent and the low speed control is quite unreal. You can really creep without lurching. Quite impressive. The real trick though is if we drive into my hand to stop the truck, the motor just carries on spinning at the same RPM. Essentially, it's self-adjusting to maintain the RPM no matter the load. So the throttle is now a speed control rather than a torque control, which should be ideal for smooth running around the layout. Having said that, you can change the settings to make it behave more like a traditional ESC if you don't get on with it. And speaking of the settings, there's only a few, mostly the basics like battery cell count, but you do get a couple of settings for the drag brake, which is especially handy when you've got a very heavy trailer or you're going up and down ramps. To set up the ESC, the simplest method is to use an LED programmer. If you've already got one of the nicer Hobbywing ESCs like the WP1080, you've almost certainly already got one, or probably 10. The settings on the label won't match the ESC, but we can use the table in the manual to match up the item and value. I'll have to have a play around and see what works. With the 1080 and an 80 turn motor, the drag brake works well at one of its weaker settings with the slowest rate, but we'll have to wait until I can test it out properly. And speaking of testing, since this is a quick and dirty video that's a little out of sequence, we won't be doing a full test just yet. I want to get the painted bodywork on first so we can have a good comparison with a largely stock Tamiya 6x4 just to see how much all these mods have helped. So for now, that's about it. We've got a super tidy looking chassis now that there's no visible ESC, and I can't wait to try it out. Until then, thanks for watching, like if you like, subscribe if you haven't, and leave a comment if there's something on your mind. Bye guys!